Hello and welcome to this webinar about building embedded Linux images with the Octo project. My name is Brandon Shibley. I'm a field application engineer with Toradex and I'm coming to you live from Seattle. I thank you all for coming. This is the second part of a two-part series about using the Octo project. The recording for part one has been posted to YouTube and Toradex.com for viewing. And if you didn't join us for part one, that's okay. I'll give you a brief uh, overview of part one, and you can, of course, watch part one or part two recordings at a future time. Here's the outline for this webinar. I'll continue our discussion of the Octo project by going into a bit more depth than we got to in the first part of the webinar. And I'm going to give a brief overview or a view of the Toradex Yocto project build system to refresh your memory before we put it back to use. The real world demo that I'm going to give you will take the vast majority of our time so I will have to quickly transition to a discussion of the demonstration and then get right into it. Finally there will be time at the end for questions. As you likely recall from the previous webinar, Toradex makes pen compatible ARM based system on modules and we rely on the Octo project to extend the commonality and interchangeability of our modules into software, specifically into the build system and the Linux images that we provide. So let's get into the details of the Octo project concepts. I only briefly discussed layers in part one, so I'm going to discuss the layers, the nature of layers in a bit more detail now. Layers are designed to stack and they are in a general sense interchangeable, although not universally so as some layers have dependencies on other layers. They contain metadata such as configuration files, classes, and recipes. Layer order and their precedence is defined by a property called priority. Layers inclusion into the build system is configured in the bblayers.com file. Layers provide machine configurations, distribution policy, and software, and they're logically formulated and divided based on their purpose. The graphic on the right is taken from the Yocto project documentation. We see that the OE core is the foundation, followed by a distro layer. Here it's Meta Yocto. In the case of the Toradex build system, it's uh, Meta Angstrom as the distro layer. Above that are BSP layers, for example, Meta FSL ARM and Meta Toradex. Meta Toradex will ultimately be split up since it should exist as both a BSP layer and a software layer separately. So you'll see that Meta Toradex is actually given a fairly high priority in the build system despite having BSP configuration. Splitting the layer will resolve this issue. An example of a UI layer is the Meta LXDE layer in the Toradex build system. The commercial layer is where the other half of the Meta Toradex layer should ultimately be and then at the top is where we'll find, for example, the software for an end product. In reality, the layers shown here above the BSP layer are not necessarily this rigidly defined, although this model does tend to play out in this way. Machine configuration is defined in BSP layers. A BSP layer provides recipes for the bootloader, kernel, and low-level hardware support. It may also append to recipes and other BSP layers. The BSP layer also contains machine configuration files, which define for a machine the recipes that should be used for its bootloader, kernel, etc., and the preferred provider of those recipes. It also defines the architecture that packages should be compiled for and the device tree and features to be used by the machine. And again, examples of BSP layers are MetaFSL ARM as well as MetaToradex. Distribution policy is typically defined within a distribution layer. Examples of distribution policy include package type, of which uh, RPM, dev, and IPK packages are supported, uh, package selection, and compile time options. Uh, additionally, a distro may define broad features that it supports. For example, these include Bluetooth, IPsec, IPv6, SystemD, Wayland X11 are ones I've listed, and quite a few others are possible. And I think it's important to note that the distro's comp file overrides similar settings in the build comps local.comp file, so it's really given some authority to set policy for the overall image. Recipes are a type of metadata which are parsed by BitBake to build software packages, so they're really quite crucial to the build system and they're probably the thing that we spend the most time working on. So we'll give them some more attention here. They're defined by BB files and appended to by uh, BB append files. These files define the source files, local or remote, license information, runtime and build time dependencies, and the packages to be created uh, by the recipes and, and actually much more than that. 
And recipes also can define build tasks. So these are common build tasks that most recipes define. A recipe may have more or less. You can list the tasks that a recipe has by using the list task function with uh, BitBake. And do build is the default one. So this is what runs when we don't specify um, a specific task for BitBake. And it actually runs through the typical build procedure which encompasses these other tasks. So building a standard package would result in several tasks being performed. And here's a look at the Yocto project development environment we saw in part one. Note that the build tasks in the previous slide are represented in this diagram. So you can really follow along from fetch, unpack, patch, configure, compile, install, package. And these are the major configuration files uh, that you'll see in the build system. Most of these I've described in some way or another already, so I'm not going to go into detail on these. Um, but local.conf is perhaps the most regularly touched of these files when you're building uh, images. You can also set the um, machine, distro, and other um, variables here for your builds. And you can use it to configure the location for downloads uh, and shared state cache. You can also use it to set the number of uh, concurrent threads that will be used in your builds or defining extra packages or image features to be included in image builds and, and much more. So it's definitely uh, good to check out the local.com file. And again, these others I've um, briefly described in other layers, and we're going to see examples um, uh, of most of these in our uh, demonstration today. So uh, I'm going to also just give you a quick refresher uh, about the Toradex Yocto project build system. Uh, since we'll be using it in the uh, demonstration. It makes use of the Angstrom Yocto project compatible embedded Linux distribution. We also maintain an LXDE meta layer which we utilize as the default desktop environment for our evaluation images. Most importantly, our build system includes the BSP support for all of our currently supported system on modules. These are the layers which are provided by the build system. Note that some layers have uh, additional sub-layers, most notably Meta Open Embedded, which has uh, a number of meta layers within it. And here you'll see the BSPs and machine configurations that we support along with the image recipes that we provide as part of our Meta Toradex layer. And as you'll recall, Angstrom LXDE image is the default image that we distribute both on our modules and on our website. And then these are uh, additional resources um, that you can find information from. The octoproject.org documentation is uh, quite good. Also, openembedded.org uh, has uh, a nice wiki. And then from Toradex, um, there's our developer website, our community website, which is a great place to ask questions. And then you can find this and other webinars at toradex.com slash webinars. OK, so I want to get into our demonstration for today. Um, Again, it will take most of the webinar. And what I want to do is provide a real-world uh, scenario for this demonstration. So um, I, I spend pretty much all my time working with customers of Toradex, and so I get um, a good feeling of what a lot of our customers are trying to accomplish. And so I've just defined some super simple high-level requirements here, just hypothetical requirements of course, we could go into much more detail, but the the point here is just to create a scenario which we can build a, a real demonstration around. And I've already specified a solution for these requirements, which is to use a Toradex Calibri IMX6 system on module, a custom carrier board with Wi-Fi, a capacitive touchscreen, and a custom Linux image uh, with a Qt um, application. And if you're not familiar with Qt, it's a um, you know, a C++ framework for building uh, nice UI applications. This is our evaluation board. It is the, um, this is what most of our customers would start developing with. It has many connectors on it. You can break out pretty much all the IOs of our system on modules out here on the, um, on these headers and allow you to connect all kinds of things up. But then what our customers ultimately do is build a carrier board that's much smaller, compact, um, cheaper to build. And this particular board that we're going to use for our demonstration is from Gumsticks. Um, and it's a reference board that uh, they'll be using with uh, Toradex Calibri modules. Uh, this is the same board populated with the Calibri IMX6 module. 
you can see we have it with a resistive touch screen attached. And then for this um, demonstration, I'm also going to show this uh, capacitive touch screen, which utilizes uh, HDMI for the display interface and USB for the touch. And so this should give us um, quite a bit to test for our demo. And so a little more information about this carrier board. I mean, we're basically going to build our a custom machine configuration around the particulars of this carrier board. So there's already a machine configuration for the Calibri IMX6, and it's based around, or at least it uses a device tree aimed at our um, off-the-shelf carrier boards from Toradex. But many of our customers build a custom carrier board, and um, I'm using this carrier board from Gumsticks, and I think it does represent kind of the process that most of our customers go through to adapt a BSP and the image to their custom carrier board. So this board has an onboard uh, TIY Link 8 Wi Fi Bluetooth module. Uh, it provides these other interfaces such as HDMI, USB host and client. Has a nice uh, USB to serial um, converter on board. So you can really just use the USB for the console. Micro SD card, Ethernet, um, the RGB LCD, as you saw for our resistive touchscreen and then a variety of other interfaces, which we won't actually get around to uh, fully demonstrating today. Okay, so I'll transition to the, uh, the hands-on portion here of our demonstration. And we'll begin by um, following a similar process that we did in the part one of the webinar. So we'll begin by setting up our build system by creating a Yocto directory and inside there as well, we will initialize um, our repositories um, for the build system. And we're going to um, initialize using the repo manifest tag of our V2.5 beta 3 image. And once those repos are initialized, uh, we can now repo sync, which is going to go and check out all the uh, remote repos. We're going to pull down all the, um, in this case, it's actually meta layers used by our uh, build system. So it's just pulling all those down um, so they exist locally. And this will take a little bit of time. So I just uh, skipped ahead here. And now we can source the export file, which sets up the environment for our build system. And at this point, we've built two uh, BitBake recipes. Um, I'm also going to start Toaster, um, so we had some, some folks interested in the use of Toaster, which is a web-based UI. And so we'll have a look at the end um, at what it does. We'll have it running here in the background. And at this point, um, let's take a look at the meta layers that make up our current build system. So you see these listed. Again, we briefly saw these um, earlier in the presentation. And what we're going to do is build some of our own layers uh, to customize our image. So the first thing we're going to do is build a custom image around this custom carrier board, um, which will require some changes to the kernel and device tree. Uh, and so we'll begin by creating this new BSP layer, Meta Gumsticks uh, Calibri. And keep in mind that although we're creating a new BSP layer, uh, we're still largely relying on the underlying Meta Toradex and Meta FSLR layers. Therefore, for our new BSP layer, um, we'll be quite simple, and it's just a thin layer on top of these other layers, which allows us to make some minor adjustments to the kernel and device tree. And if you went about creating your own uh, complete BSP layer, there'd be more stuff to tackle. And the Octo Project documentation would be a good resource for you to do that. Uh, there are even some special tools for creating BSP layers. Um, but again, this documentation is largely aimed at customizing an image for our system on module. Okay, so here we go. We're going to create a conf directory, which is a necessity for all layers, um, specifically the layer.conf file inside of here, which we're going to copy from Metatordex. This is always a good um, strategy if you're not exactly sure what you need in in your layer, you can just borrow from other layers. So that's what we're going to do for um, our layer.com file. We'll just grab it from Metatoradex. 
And we actually don't need to uh, change a whole lot here. We're just going to change um, everything that says Meta Toradex to Meta, my, uh, Meta Gumsticks uh, Calibri. And we'll also change the priority. So again, the layers are stacking here, and we're going to make sure that this layer takes precedence over Meta Toradex so that um, all the changes we make are applied on top of Meta Toradex. Okay, the next step is now to create a machine directory and inside of here we're going to actually place the uh, machine configuration file. So again, we're going to create a, a new machine configuration. But again, we're going to take, uh, we're going to copy a existing machine configuration, in this case the Calibri IMX6 machine configuration from Metatoradex and we're going to use that to um, as a basis for our new machine definition. So if we look at this file, I'm not going to actually change it right now because um, first I want to make changes to the layer before um, I then set the parameters inside of here, but you get a sense of what's in here. We have, we're defining the um, kernel and U-boot recipes that we're going to use. Um, we're defining the device tree. That's specifically one thing we want to change and um, so some other things there like dis, uh, machine features and things are interesting as well. Um, but moving on, as I mentioned, what we want to do is make some changes to the kernel. So we're going to be using a TIYLink 8 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. This is not fully supported in our version of the Linux kernel. So we need to patch the kernel to add support for this device. And so I'm creating uh, recipes-kernel, which is where we'll find the Linux um, kernel recipe. And we're going to append to the meta Toradex Linux Toradex-FSL recipe. And I create this directory here where I'm going to put my patches for the kernel. So I'm just copying these patches, which I've already made. Um, actually, the folks at Gumsticks were... Um, provided some assistance here in producing these patch files. And here we can see uh, there are seven files. And the, so the first six are really patching kernel source code. And I'm not going to really go into that. Many Wi-Fi devices are already fully supported in the kernel, and we have no need to, would, wouldn't require patching. But here's the last patch, which is interesting. It adds the complete device tree created by Gumsticks. Um, so it gets added to the make file, and then the file down here really defines um, the device tree. Now the device tree is defined by a layer of files, and so this is the top layer, um, which is defining basically all the custom conf um, configuration necessary for this carrier board. Still relying on some of the underlying Calibri um, IMX6 uh, device tree files. Uh, here we see some pen mux changes. Um, we're sort of uh, changing some interfaces, for example, um, an SDIO used for the Ylink 8 device. And then here also very interesting is we're going to make a change to the def config for the kernel. And I, I don't know if you noticed, but I highlighted Calibri IMX6 underscore gumsticks def config, which doesn't actually exist in our kernel source. So if we just apply this a patch, there's no file to patch. Um, but uh, I'll show you why that is later. This adds support for um, the Wi-Link, uh, a Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth, and the other um, necessary configs for that. So now let's actually look at the kernel recipe. This is out of Metatoradex. And this is what the kernel recipe looks like. It's telling us um, quite a bit of stuff here. So we get a summary, which tells us there's a kernel license, um, and then the version of the kernel, 3.14.28. The source revision and the source branch, as well as the actual source for the source code. So coming from git.toradex.com, um, the git repo there. 
And then also interesting here are we have a do configure prepend, so this is a function associated with the configure task. And if this is where it actually um, locates the def config file and then runs make on the def config and then can apply additional config changes. What we opted to do instead is create a patch for a def config. And I'm going to explain the details of that here in a little bit as we define our BB append file, which is going to append to the um, Toradex uh, kernel recipe. So we just looked at the kernel recipe. We're going to append onto that recipe now. And here I'm defining it, the, the folder that we created with our patches. So this is telling the recipe, or really BitBake, that there are some additional files that, um, and where to find those. Um, we're changing the source rev because we're also changing the actual branch that we're pulling for our kernel. Um, so we're now going to use the dash next um, branch for this uh, kernel source for the IMX6 from the Toradex uh, git tree. And then these are these actual patches. We list them here in the source URI. They get appended there and that tells uh, BitBake to apply those patches to the source code. And then we're going to add our Calibri IMX6 gumsticks machine to the compatible machine list here. And then this is that little magic function I was going to tell you about. Um, it's part of the unpack um, task and it's basically copying the Calibri IMX6 def config that is in the source um, tree and then naming that copy Calibri IMX6 gumsticks def config. And that's what the patch that I showed you that patches the def config is going to patch that. Um, so now we have, um, we can actually have the two different def configs, one for Calibri IMX6, one for the gumsticks variant. Okay, now the next step is the uh, bootloader. We don't actually have to change uh, bootloader source code here, but I am going to change the um, some variables in uBoot's default environment. Um, so I'm creating this directory here where I will place a patch file for uBoot. And again, this changes a header file which defines some default environment variables. And um, so I'm just copying the patch and then we'll have a look at what's in this patch. So two things to note here. We're changing the default uh, device tree file that's configured in the uBoot environment. And then also a parameter called vidargs, which is passed uh, to the kernel at boot time. And I'm changing the parameters in there so that, first of all, it supports two displays now, our uh, LCD and our HDMI display. I'm setting the, the default resolution for those. And I created multiple um, configurations, one for HDMI as the default display and one for the LCD as the default display. So those are now part of the standard or the default um, U-Boot environment. And so ultimately here, again, we're just going to append to the existing um, bootloader recipe from Toradex. So I'm creating my BB append file. And again, we're going to tell BitBake that there are some files in this new directory we created, uh, our one patch file. And we need to append that to the source URI. And then I'm again adding uh, Calibri IMX6 gumsticks to the compatible machine list. And that's essentially it. So um, again, pr pretty basic here. We're not actually changing the really source code of uBoot, just adding some changes to the default environment. And now I can go back and change our machine configuration. So I, this is the file I copied from Metatoradex for Calibri IMX6. And now we're going to make the the necessary customization for a Calibri IMX6 gumsticks um, machine configuration. In fact, it's very simple here. There's actually not many changes. The only change that we need to make is the device tree name. So we don't need to change the kernel or the uBoot name because I only appended to the recipes there. 
Um, so the, the name stays the same. Um, the major change we need to make here is associating to a different device tree. And that's it. And so that's that's actually all we need to do for our BSP layer. Um, so here's how that looks. We have a configuration directory with our layer.conf and our machine configuration. We have the recipe um, needed for U-boot uh, to simply append onto the uh, Toradex U-boot recipe. And then we also have our recipes for the Linux kernel, which include patches for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well as the um, creating the device tree for a carrier board and the necessary changes to the uh, kernel configuration. And so with this now created, we can go into our build conf, uh, local.conf file, and we can now configure our build system to use the Calibri IMX6 Gumsticks machine. So that's what I'm doing here. It's, that will be the default machine that we now build for. And I have to place that we accept the FSL end user's license agreement um, as we're using the meta FSL ARM layer. It's just a little parameter set inside uh, the file. And I'm also going to modify the bblayers.com file. This is where we configure which meta layers are used by the build system. So we now need to add our layer that we just created, uh, Meta um, Gumsticks Calibri, to the, uh, here they're, the layers are actually divided up here in this case, uh, base layers, BSP layers, so we're putting it into the BSP layers. And so now I'm going to use BitBake to show us the layers that are configured. And we do see that our layer shows up here, and it's given the priority that we set. So it looks like its uh, layer configuration is good. Now I'm going to, I'm just going to check some other things that we did. I'm going to run unpack on the kernel. And as you'll recall, we did create a do unpack uh, prepend function, um, which takes care of making a copy of the uh, Calibri IMX6 def config. Uh, so that we'll now have a Calibri IMX6 gumsticks def config. We wouldn't necessarily have to do that. Um, we could just use the Calibri IMX6 def config, and then we'd, we could change some other things to make that work. But uh, I like being able to maintain those multiple machine configurations, keeping them fully independent if possible. So let's, now that the um, kernel is unpacked, let's check and see if these files um, do exist. So we do see they're in the work shared directory and then the kernel source, arch arm configs, and this is where you find the def configs. We have our Calibri IMX6 def config as well as our Calibri IMX6 gumsticks def config. And let's just have a quick look at one of those files. These, you know, these are kernel configurations that get placed on top of the default kernel configuration as defined by the kconfig files for the kernel. So this isn't the complete kernel config, only the additional changes that are necessary for um, these uh, machines. And now the next thing I'll do is uh, menu config. So we can actually look at the um, graphically view the kernel configuration and what this will do is, in addition to unpacking the kernel, it'll apply our patches. And as you recall, we patched the def config. And it will um, run configure on the kernel. So we're actually going to see, uh, this should show us the final kernel configuration that will be used to build the kernel. Um, and we added patches for our TI Ylink uh, wireless device. So I'm just going to verify here that those um, configs are indeed set. These are not set by default. Um, so here under TI Wireless LAN support, we do see that the devices um, that we configured uh, are set correctly. So that's a good sign that our recipe and patches um, are working correctly.
Now the next thing that we want to do, so we're done with the BSP layer. Um, we said in our requirements that we want a, a nice UI. And so we're going to utilize the uh, Cube framework, specifically Cube 5. And there's a meta Cube 5 layer, which I'm going to clone. Uh, this is the the rev that I'm going to use for that rev of that layer. So first I clone it without a checkout. I'm going to change directory into that meta layer and check out with this specific um, revision of the layer. So that's all checked out. Let's have a look at what's inside this meta layer. And this is going to provide us um, support for Q5. We see there's some classes, layer config, licenses, and then the recipes, both dev tools and um, source are the all the packages needed for Q. And so that was pretty easy. Uh, it, it's now included into our build system. We still need to configure it in bblayers.conf, but we'll do that in a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is create a new layer, which we'll call uh, Meta My Layer, and I'm going to use it to uh, include our custom image uh, recipe and any associated recipes for populating the image. And again, inside this layer, as all layers do require, we'll need a configuration, um, a layer.comp file. So again, I'll just copy that from MetaToradex. Um, and the key here will be, you know, changing everything to MetaMyLayer, as well as setting a priority. Again, I'll we'll set it um, above all the other layers, basically, um, so that this one takes precedence. And there are actually other files that would be necessary for a, a layer, which we didn't include our last layer and we're not going to include in this layer just due to time, but you would normally want to include a readme file, um, some li licensing files and such, and you'll want to do that if you're going to distribute your um, meta layer, but again, we're um, using this more or less internally, so um, I'm going to forego that for the moment, but we do need the layer.com file, and again, it's rather important because it does um, set a couple important uh, variables here, uh, including the priority for the layer. All right, so now we can um, we'll create a recipes directory, and this is where we're going to put our images inside of uh, recipes slash images. And in, so far, I've just appended to other recipes. In this case, I'm going to I'm going to use the Toradex um, Angstrom LXDE image as a basis for our our new image but I'm going to just copy the file instead of append to it. We'll copy this file and make our changes there. So this will ra actually override the Angstrom LXDE image provided by Metatoradex. And uh, you can see the image or the uh, recipe here. A lot of the things that this particular file does is um, define packages to be installed in the image. This includes some other files which we're still going to um, keep so we're basically still building on the same foundation that the um, Toradex image uses. Just making some minor changes here. And I'm changing the image name based on the machine. Um, we'll call this new image Calibri IMX6 My Linux Image to set it apart from the others. And so now that we've um, added some additional, well, we've added the Q5 layer, um, and we want to make some other modifications to our image. So I'm going to make some changes to the image install list here. So there's a big list of packages that are going to be installed. I'm not going to go too crazy. You could really come in here and fully customize some things. Um, but the one thing I'm going to do is create a variable, which I will put all the um, Q5 packages that I want here in the Q5 uh, variable. This is just an organizational thing. It's ultimately going to get appended to image install. You can see there's other um, image install underscore append underscore Tegra. So there are packages which are appended based on machine. 
So if you wanted to simplify this file and you knew you were only going to use one machine configuration, you could wipe out um, a fair amount from this file. Now the other thing we want to do, you can see quite a few of the packages listed here. Again, many others are um, included in other files which are included by this file. Um, one thing I want to do is just take out some stuff. That's oftentimes something good to do. I'm taking out the web browser since for this um, application I've decided I don't need a web browser and I don't need any explicit GStreamer support. Now, I expect that some GStreamer libraries will still be installed as dependencies to other packages. But I'm going to add Q5 and I'm going to add um, the firmware for our TI Y-Link device. So Linux-firmware-WL18XX is the name given to the firmware provided by Open Embedded Core. I actually don't need to include this in my BSP layer because it's already provided by Open Embedded Core in the Linux firmware um, recipe. So that makes my life rather easy. And the other thing I want to do in my image, by default, um, at least with the image provided by Toradex is we don't set a root password which makes it quite nice for evaluation and development but not necessarily a good idea for something you would deploy in the field or um, put in a final product so this here will add a password to the root user and you could actually do an encrypted password too that's a good idea um, it's a couple more steps so for the interest of time I just put the, um, the password there in text and now I'm going to this section here is where we add some files that are going to be included with the image tarball that we're going to generate. So um, this is a little bit Toradex specific. We're creating a Calibri-IMX6 gumsticks directory and this will include files that ultimately get included in the image tarball um, which is used for flashing the image. Um, I'm just going to link in some of the, these files from Calibri IMX6 in the Meta Toradex layer. So there's a bin directory which has some U-boot scripts. These are used for updating our modules with new images. Um, also including some flashing utilities for the IMX6. And so again, I'm linking those out of the Meta Toradex layer. And then finally, the update script. So in our image tarball, there is an update script, which is used for populating an SD card or a USB stick um, that can be used for flashing the image to the modules onboard uh, flasher EMMC. So I'm going to make a copy of that file because I need to tweak it um, to accommodate our new machine configuration. So I'm going to edit that update.sh script and again just um, want to mention this is not very standard among um, the Octo project so this is a little more um, particular to just the way the Toradex likes to build its images and distribute them. So what I'm doing here is um, I'm just creating a way to differentiate or to tell the update script um, how to determine whether which machine it's looking at um, and then setting some parameters uh, based on whether it's flashing for Calibri IMX6 or for Calibri IMX6 gumsticks. So that's um, pretty simple overall. It doesn't actually change the packages that are generated, only the final um, you know, image tarball with these update utilities. And I also have to create a link here because the actual recipe which we're not uh, appending or copying or anything that generates that image tarball with those utilities is in Meta Toradex. Um, I'm just creating a link to this Calibri IMX6 gumsticks directory from Meta Toradex into my Meta MyLayer which will allow that recipe to find these new files and include them in the final image. So I realize that's a little convoluted, um, but it's also not terribly important to the Octo project in general. 
Here's what our meta my layer looks like now. It has a layer configuration. It has the recipes with our image recipe, uh, which overrides the meta Toradex uh, Angstrom LXD image. And then these files, which are used for doing an update of the module with the new image. Now I'm creating, um, I'm actually going to append to a recipe called base files, which is provided by Open Embedded Core and is appended to by other meta layers. And it's basically used to provide some base files for the image. And I'm going to add a file um, to the desktop specifically uh, that creates an icon on the desktop for uh, my Q5 demo. So this is just kind of an interesting example. Uh, you can just include an image or a, a file into an image. In this case, it's just going to be used to create an icon on the desktop for launching this demo application, um, which is built with uh, Q5. And I'm appending to that base files recipe here. So this is how we're going to, um, we're telling the BitBake to look for files in this new directory and specifically using source URI for um, this desktop file. And then do install append is where how we install the file into its location on the root file system. So we're telling it to install to slash home slash root slash desktop. Okay. So the next thing we need to do in this meta my layer is we need to um, accommodate uh, or we need to add some additional files for our Bluetooth. And so we're going to do this inside of the recipes dash connectivity directory, which I'll create in order to append to the uh, Blue Z4 recipe. Now this is a recipe used for um, Bluetooth support and open embedded. And we're going to use this recipe to um, add some additional uh, files for Bluetooth support. One is a systemd service. So I'm creating this directory to put these, these two files in. And this is the file, Bluetooth TTYY link. It's a, so we're actually attaching our Bluetooth is connected through a UART. And so we're going to use HCI attach. Uh, as a way to connect to the Bluetooth through the UART. And so this service takes care of performing this um, ACI attach function at start using systemd. And then we're also going to create a UDEV rule. And so with this file, There we see it. Um, there's a, this is the UDEV rule, which will, um, based on the identity of the Bluetooth chip, is going to associate it with the driver and the um, systemd service. And now the next step is to um, append to the Blue Z4 recipe in order to include these files uh, ultimately in the root file system. So we'll see a do install um, task here. So this should start to look um, rather routine now. Um, we're adding files to the source URI and we have something here which is going to tell systemd associate this service file with the systemd service uh, for this particular package. And the do install script here is what is going to actually install these files to a location on the file system, uh, the root file system. Okay, now this is what our um, meta my layer looks like. It is now done. This is all we need. So we have our, our image. We have some additional files that are going to be included into the image. Uh, which are defined in a couple different recipes that we appended. And uh, so we would now be ready to, to create this image. Having another look at the uh, meta layers by the, in our build system, we, we uh, added three new meta layers. Uh, 
the BSP layer gum sticks uh, Colibri, the uh, Q5 meta layer, and then this meta layer, meta my layer, which is used for creating our image. We can also put other software that we want to define in there. Um, So now let's go ahead and add these layers to our uh, bblayers.com file. So we've already added Meta um, Gumsticks Calibri here. Uh, we still need to add um, the Meta My Layer, and then we're going to add um, actually another layer that we require for um, Meta Q5 is Meta Ruby. So I'll add that here. This is already included in Meta Open Embedded and then Meta Q5. And so now uh, all these new layers should be included into our build system configuration. Um, I'll go ahead and double check that with the BitBake layers, uh, show layers function. We do in fact see that these uh, layers are now included. We can see the, the priorities that are set here so we can really get a sense of how they're all gonna stack together And now let's, uh, well, again, use uh, BitBake layers to check our the image files that um, are the image recipes that exist in our configuration, and we want to make sure that um, again we we're overriding Angstrom LXDE image, which is provided in MetaToradex, it's being overridden by the recipe we now have in our own layer, Meta My Layer. And so here we see Angstrom LXD image, and we do in fact see that it is defined in two recipes. And since Meta My Layer has a higher priority, uh, we will build the recipe in Meta My Layer. So that's exactly what we'd like to do. So we will go ahead and bit bake Angstrom LXDE image. As you may recall, this can take a long time. I would say, in general, it's probably more than a couple hours if you've never built the image before. Uh, so here we do see that there are almost 7,000 tasks which need to run. So this would uh, take quite some time. I will have to go ahead and speed it up. And we can see under the build configuration that we are indeed building for the Calibri IMX6 gumsticks machine. So when this completes, let's take a look at what was generated, specifically in the uh, deploy images directory. Here we have our, for our Calibri IMX6 gumsticks, we have the, um, the image tarball. And then, of course, the other important files, um, for example, the uh, root file system, the kernel, the device tree, the bootloader. And let's also have a look at toaster. So I started toaster at the beginning here. And now that the build is done, we can look at toaster to see sort of the builds that were done. And I have to confess that I, I did um, do something wrong with toaster along the way and had to restart. Um, so a complete build is not listed here. You'll see the build time for one of these was only a couple minutes because I did it after I already built the image. So it only re needed to re-execute five tasks we can see here. Um, and so most of the tasks did not need to be rerun. They're already cached by the build system. So that's a nice feature. Although we don't get to see all the fun stuff that happened in the build in this case, we would normally see that. Um, we got to see some warnings here. We can still see um, a lot of other information, though. So, you know, I can see the configuration for the build. This shows us a lot of the important parameters. It shows us the meta layers that are included in the build system. Also, the specific commit layer commit um, associated with the layer. Um, so lots of good information to have.
Um, we see here all the bitbake variables, there are a lot of them. I won't go through all of those. Um, tasks, so again, almost 7,000 tasks that are involved in building um, this image. Um, recipes, this is where we would um, find all the recipes that are uh, built in the process of building our image. And then packages is where it's a little disappointing because it didn't build new packages in this specific um, build of Angstrom LXD image because again um, I had to rerun it after already building. So here um, also performance information which is interesting, time, CPU usage, disk I.O. So that's all quite, um, quite nice information to have at times. Now let's get to wrap this up here. Um, we've built our image, so now let's extract the image file. This is a tarball, and again, the, the details of this are a little specific to Toradex. Make sure we use the, the sudo or uh, super user permissions here so we preserve all the permissions of the root file system and everything. Um, we'll change directory into the extracted image directory, and we'll use the update script to flash our SD card. And again, this was something I had to tweak a bit, the update.sh script to accommodate our new machine configuration. And now our SD card is ready to flash the module. This is now the terminal for our module. We're in the bootloader of the, the Calibri IMX6. I'm gonna set the board name to Calibri IMX6 Gumsticks. This will ensure that we flash the correct files um, so I'll run set update, and I'm going to update only uBoot first. So run update underscore uBoot, and then I'll reset into the new uBoot that I just flashed. So this is the uBoot that we just built. And I'm going to explicitly reset the uBoot environment to the default values, because I, I did change the default environment in our uBoot with that little uh, patch that we included in our recipe. And so now I'm going to run set update, run update. This will update the entire module, the bootloader, the kernel, the device tree, the root file system. And then when this is complete, uh, we'll boot the kernel. So now we'll have a look on the actual device here. We see on the resistive touch screen, there's um, the desktop environment. You can see uh, demonstrating touch on LXDE. There's the icon that was included in our recipe. And there's the Q5 application running. So here it is on a rather limited um, you know, screen with re limited resolution and color depth. But overall, it still looks quite nice. It's OpenGL um, accelerated, uh, hardware accelerated by the IMX6. Now I'm hopping back into the bootloader, and I'm going to change the vidargs parameter. Again, we created a um, couple variant variations here. One for HDMI as the default um, display, so that's what I'm going to change vidargs to now. This is the U-boot environment. So at the bottom, we see our vidargs. I've now changed it so the HDMI is the default display. And it's just a little bit of a um, limitation in the drivers uh, for IMX6. X can only be active on a single frame buffer at a time. So here's the touch with the capacitive touch screen. Uh, you can see it's a high resolution display. There's the icon for our Q5 application. And so here's that same application that was running previously, now running on this other display. This was included in the Q5 meta layer that we added to our uh, image. The other thing I want to demonstrate here is we did add a password to the root user. And so L LXDE is still um, set up to auto log in as root. So I'm going to change that in the uh, configuration for the desktop. We'll go ahead and reboot. 
<clears throat> so this should not auto log us in as root. That may or may not be a good idea depending on your application. You can also create other users in um, your, so here I had to use the password to log in. You can create other users as part of, you know, your image recipe that would, might be a good idea for you security wise. So I did log in with the root password and now I'm going to check on the Wi-Fi. Um, here I'm using Conman, the connection manager included with this image, uh, to enable Wi-Fi. I'll now scan the Wi-Fi here. Uh, this will take a second before I can check the available services. All right, there we go. Uh, we see there are a couple networks um, in the vicinity. And the other um, thing I can use is the UI tool, command, uh, conman properties here. We also see that those um, networks are showing up. And finally, we should check on the Bluetooth. Uh, using the system D. Uh, here I'm grabbing for Bluetooth and here is our service which is used to um, connect to the Bluetooth over the UART. Um, unfortunately you can't see because I highlighted it but it failed so I did promise you this would be a real-world demonstration. Failure is quite typical the first time around so <laughs> um, so that, that does it for the demonstration. Uh, of course, we'd still have to fix our Bluetooth, and I think there's also still maybe some issues with Wi-Fi. So that's the way these things go. Uh, but we demonstrated how you can build a complete custom image around this um, custom carrier board with some uh, unique uh, software requirements to use uh, Q5 for a nice graphical user interface. And so um, I'm now open for questions. Uh, let me know if you have any specific questions. Um, let me pull up the ones that have been asked already. Okay, so somebody asked, how can we use the Dash C menu config to add the Atheros um, or the Ath 9K driver, save it, and compile a new image with the new config? So this is um, it's a good question. Um, you kind of saw how we did it with our other Wi-Fi device in this demo. Um, now you can, you really can follow kind of the steps I did to unpack the kernel and then run menu config and set the kernel, you know, change the kernel configuration that way rather than use a patch. And, and then you could force um, compile and um, install the, or package the final kernel. Um, the reason I say force is because, you know, in the case that you've already built the kernel, you may need to, if you're changing stuff in the work directory, BitBake often doesn't notice that. So it, it notices changes to, um, your, uh, to the metadata, not necessarily to these temporary directories like the work directory. So you may have to force recompile. And the other dangerous thing about making changes in the temporary work directories is, um, it could be those changes could be lost so that's where you can definitely make the change with menu config and then what I would do is generate a patch after you've made that change so once menu config saves its configuration to doc config in the work directory uh, I would then make a patch of that and then apply that to a um, kernel recipe and then you know that, which is what we ended up doing in this demonstration. We had a patch for our kernel config and that got um, used in our machine configuration which we built our image with. Next question here. Okay, so if you want to change the distro, so in this case um, our image uses uh, angstrom as the distribution um, so maybe you want to use Pocky or you maybe have a different distro or maybe you could even create a new distro. Um, distro is a variable that's set in the local.conf file. So this is in the build conf, local.conf. You can change distro there and of course you'll need to have uh, a meta layer that defines all the policy for that distro. And so it's really quite easy. If you already have the meta layer, for example, maybe you pull down um, 
Meta Yocto, then you can just change the distro uh, configuration uh, variable. And it, you know, it's important to note that there may be other things which don't play nicely together if you just swap out the distro. Ideally, they can be swapped readily, uh, but prepare for maybe some hiccups. Let's see, how can we add packages that we already have on our repo and can install using opackage after boot? I believe what's being asked here, actually by a couple people, is if you build packages, um, not as an entire image, um, for example, maybe you build a package like Nginx or maybe you build, you know, firmware for a Wi-Fi device or, or whatever the case may be. Um, you can then use opackage to install from the build system. So what that requires is that you configure a web server um, on your system that has the build system and you want to serve the directory that has um, those the deploy slash IPK directory that's inside um, your build system. So all those packages that get generated, the packages that are created, the IPK packages go into deploy slash IPK. And if you serve that out on a web server, then you can use opackage. You'll have to configure opackage. Um, there are some config files in slash etc slash opkg. Um, you'll need to create one that points to the uh, your server address, which is serving those files. Um, and so that should work. I th hope that answers the question here. So again, um, major steps are to build it, build the package in your build system, conf uh, configure a web server on your system with the build system, and then configure O package to um, to connect to that server. So that's done through uh, another configuration file that defines the repo for O package. So somebody says O package only works if it's an application, doesn't work for drivers. That's actually not true. Uh, it can work for um, kernel modules, or you can even install a kernel. Um, it's perhaps a little bit tricky. So this is something you need to be aware of. Um, most kernels these days are a little bit careful about how they associate with kernel modules. Um, so I think that's the problem that maybe this person is having. The problem is, is that if you compile a kernel, uh, well, it depends on how the kernel is configured. Um, kernels can define a, a level of, um, of scrutiny, I guess I could call it, um, as far as what modules they will load or not load. So if you've made any changes to a kernel um, and used and then uh, compiled a kernel module, it, it may be that um, basically if you don't have the same hash, um, if, if you hash the kernel source and it doesn't match between the kernel and then the tree that you used to build your kernel module, there's a good chance the module is not going to load. Also, if the kernel name differs, it, it's not going to load the kernel by default. Um, you may be able to manually load it um, or sideload it with um, mod probe. So that's something you have to be a little bit careful with. I, ideally, in my opinion, um, I would just compile everything together. So compiling, I think you're actually asking for more trouble if you want to compile a kernel module on its own. Um, because it's actually fairly easy to just recompile the whole kernel with, you know, maybe some different modules included. Because those modules may have dependencies which require um, other configuration changes to the kernel. And these are the kinds of things that can then break the compatibility between the, the specific compiled kernel and the kernel module. If you compile it all together, then you don't have these issues. Let's see, another question here. Um, we have our meta layer for our board. Now we're moving our Git repo from a provider to another one. So I have to update repo configuration files and each recipe that links to our repos. Now the question is, if I change the address of layer repo 
oh, we rebuild all my recipes that in reality are not changed, but only the source address or not. And here's one of the issues you might run into. So even if the source code between these different packages, uh, between one environment and another are identical, the package, you know, even it having different name could be a problem here because it's it's looking for dependencies and it's looking for those dependencies by name. And so if those names are different, it may not find them. Um, that's one potential snag. There's possibly others. So I don't have an easy answer for you here. Um, I would, I guess that's something I would have to digest even to think about what would be the right step to take. Um, okay, next question. So how can you find other meta layers? So, for example, I, I was able to just clone meta QT5 um, and use it. And there are quite a few other meta layers out there that you can just um, make use of. Of course, you'll have to take note of the license that comes with the, the layers and the recipes. You can use the layers.openembedded.org uh, um, website. So Open Embedded uh, maintains this layer um, uh, database. And so it, you can search by layer, search by recipe. Um, and so that's actually a really nice resource. I think you can also search by machine. So um, definitely check that out if you're looking for kind of other packages you require. I know one thing that I get asked a lot is, you know, how do I find this package XYZ? It's not in the default Angstrom repositories. Um, so if that's the case, for, this is a good example. If you're looking for a recipe, maybe you found it in your Ubuntu desktop distro. Now you want it in um, your embedded Linux image, um, and you don't find it in either the existing meta layers, and you don't find it in the Angstrom repositories. Um, I would check out layers.openembedded.org. That's probably one of your first stops in figuring out what to do if, to see if maybe it's already provided in another layer, and then you can just clone the layer into your build system and possibly build that into your image. If that doesn't work, then you might be looking at, you know, writing your own recipe. There are also meta layers which aren't indexed by layers or by Open Embedded, uh, by this uh, layers Open Embedded website. So, you know, it might be that you can find it just out on the web somewhere, uh, a layer that you could clone into your build system which already has a recipe defined. That might be a little more risky though. The nice thing about using layers.openembedded.org is you can also browse by um, branch, uh, Yocto branch. So uh, our current images are still built with 1.8 Yocto um, Fido. And now um, the Yocto project is on 2.0 Yethro. And so that's something to be a little careful of too. Uh, there tends to be a fair amount of dependency um, based on these uh, Yocto versions. So mixing layers from different versions is uh, rarely a good idea. And so at least with uh, using layers.openembedded.org, um, you can also browse by branch. Um, and, and the stuff that's listed there is pretty good. Okay, so I think we've made it through our um, questions. If you have any other questions, feel free to either post in the community.toradex.com, you can contact us directly either through our support uh, email. You can, um, a lot of ways to get support. Also check our developer website, developer.toradex.com, and look out for our webinar recordings, um, which will be provided on toradex.com and YouTube. So I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Feel free to pass on any uh, feedback. I'm always happy to hear feedback, good or bad. Um, because in the end, I want to try and uh, provide the best experience possible. I have some ideas for future webinars um, beyond the Octo Project, um, other embedded Linux-related topics um, from Toradex. So let me know what you might be interested in. Uh, ultimately, our goal is to serve the needs of our customers. So um, if you're having any trouble with something, perhaps that's something. Uh, that's certainly something we want to help address. Um, so I hope 
everybody had enjoyed the webinar. Have a good day.